Vince McMahon is gone from WWE. Per Sean Ross Sapp, Nick Khan sent this message out to WWE employees during SmackDown saying, I wanted to inform you that Vince McMahon has tendered his resignation from his positions as TKO Executive Chairman and on the TKO Board of Directors. He will no longer have a role with TKO Group Holdings or WWE signed Nick Khan, who you didn't know is the president of WWE. This news obviously comes on the back of yesterday, and it was a very dark day yesterday. Details emerged of court filings of Vince McMahon being sued by a former employee who was accusing him of some of the most grim and vile things I've ever read in my life. If you want to hear more information about that, I recommend checking out the Cultaholic YouTube channel because the, their coverage is genuinely the best and most factual I've seen on YouTube. With news and information coming out today that Slim Jim have pulled their sponsorship from the Royal Rumble event tomorrow night and potentially another sponsor pulling out per Fightful as well, it's going to be very interesting because this had to happen. Vince had to go. He was a massive black cloud over WWE. But what happens next? Because don't forget, WWE themselves are still named in these legal documents. This is Things You Might Have Missed from SmackDown. Make sure you've hit the like button. And if you are new to the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button too. It would be Michael Cole who rejoined the SmackDown commentary team tonight, joining Corey Graves, obviously in light of Kevin Patrick getting released yesterday by WWE. Not sure if this is a permanent move or just a temporary one. The coming weeks will tell us that. So WWE had a special announcer tonight for Randy Orton. It is indeed the guy who put Randy Orton in his new hit music video, RKO. Randy would, of course, be here tonight to talk about the Royal Rumble. AJ and LA Knight come out. And I really like this promo for LA Knight. I think he flourished tonight. The whole reference to Rikishi with the dancing about Solo Sokoa made a lot of sense. I love the fact that they made a point of LA Knight saying he's wrestling tonight because Heyman's scared of him. So Heyman lobbied for LA Knight to be in that match against Solo Sokoa. So really good character work there for LA Knight. The segment would end, of course, with AJ Styles hitting the Pele kick to Randy Orton. So obviously a lot of hype for that fatal four-way tomorrow night. AJ Styles would attack LA Knight at the end of the main event to cause the match to end via disqualification because of course but of course it would then be Randy Orton RKO to AJ Styles for what we thought would be a Randy Orton standing tall on the go home blunt force trauma and LA Knight was kind of the last man standing I'm, I'm hyped for the fatal four-way. The first match of the night saw Santos Escobar taking on Carlito. I really like the psychology of this match, working the shoulder that Escobar injured back in November of Carlito. The news of this match, though, would come as Zelina was on the apron and she would be attacked by NXT star, now called up, Electra Lopez. Obviously allowing Santos Escobar to get the pin on Carlito. And she has joined Legado. The new Legado. And I, I like this. I think this is exactly what they needed. A counter for Zelina. Even up the numbers a little bit in this LWO Civil War. Again, I love the presentation of Escobar and Angel and Humberto. With Electra by their, their side as well. Genuinely, she's a great addition. I thought this was interesting and worth sharing. John Cena appeared on The One Show here in the UK on Tuesday night. And he would say that he wants to end his WWE career right here in London. He said he doesn't know who his final opponent would be. That's above his pay grade. But he'd love his final match to be in the O2 Arena in London. Book it, Hunter. I'll be there if that happens. Cena's final match in London. Yes, please. We have new women's tag team champions tonight as Kairi Sane and Asuka win the women's tag team goal, beating life for the party. Got to talk about that Alabama slam right onto the announce table. That looked effing brutal by Kairi. Got to note, though, they didn't hug Bailey. Kairi went to EO. Asuka went to Dakota. No one was there to hug Bailey. Oh, it's not looking good, is it? Now, if you join us on our Discord voice chats prior to SmackDown, you'll know that I said this. If the Kabukis win, I think that's a sign of Sasha and Naomi both returning. I think you do the 
Kabuki Warriors versus Sasha and Naomi at WrestleMania and somehow get to Bailey versus Io at WrestleMania as well. Obviously, they, ba- Bailey's going to need backup against the four of damage control. Dakota's out injured, so technically three. So two more people. Sasha and Naomi works perfectly, doesn't it? But do you think Sasha Banks shows up in the Royal Rumble match tomorrow night? Let me know in the comments section down below. And ahead of the Royal Rumble, make sure you go and check out the video we uploaded on Sunday as we look at the probability of every potential surprise in this year's Royal Rumble match. Very interesting video. Love the feedback in the comment section of that one as well. So go and check that out. Someone we didn't talk about though in that video was Hulk Hogan, who on Raw we talked about the possibility of him being in the Rumble. And they used him again in the advertisement for it. There's also a video on social media of Hogan saying that he might be number 30 in this year's Royal Rumble. They're surely not going to put Hulk Hogan, a man who can barely walk, in the Royal Rumble. What are we doing? For the first time tonight, we'd see the entrance of the new Carrion Cross faction, the Final Testament. And this was really cool. The music was spot on perfect. It definitely reminds me a lot of how they did the Bray Wyatt Fiend introduction. Like, here's the promos. Here's the reveal with the AOP. Here's the entrance. You're waiting for the match. It kind of does have that vibe to it. They did send Scarlett out to confront Lashley, though. This cameraman definitely had one job, and he was successful. Lashley would declare that they were going to fight tonight, not just stand in the ring. And of course, Scarlett would try clawing the eyes of Lashley out. Before Karrion Cross and the AOP left Lashley in the Street Profits laying. I'd like to see this match at the Royal Rumble. I have a funny feeling they're going to try and extend it through to WrestleMania, which is fine. Genuinely, a long build for this could be okay because you're going to get the tag match between the AOP, the Street Profits, the singles match for Cross and Lashley. So eventually doing a six man would make sense as well for this. Obviously, the booking of this stable will be the determining factor. But on first impressions, I'm impressed by this. I think this has got legs. I think this could go somewhere. So I'm behind it 100%. Trick Williams was on SmackDown this week. He would come to the ring to save Carmelo Hayes from a post-match beatdown. Interestingly, though, he didn't fist bump Melo. Instead, he lowered his fist. Obviously, Trick and Melo have had a lot of problems, like evolving on NXT as of late, who attacked Trick, that kind of storyline. Trick would walk away from Melo and just say, we've got a tag match coming up Tuesday. I just needed to save you. Now, this was interesting, though, because the SmackDown crowd knew exactly who Trick was. They chanted, whoop, that Trick. WWE's surely going to pay attention to that and think Trick is going to be a big deal. NXT general manager and youngest WWE GM of all time, Ava, was on SmackDown tonight as WWE stars would pick their Royal Rumble number, including Raw's R-Truth, who thought he had to go into quarantine I don't know why, but yeah, he was also confused by the fact Nick Aldis isn't Adam Pearce. Bianca Belair would pick her number. Bailey, well, she picked hers and she definitely didn't look happy with her number. Also, Jimmy Uso said no yeet to his number. You'd think Ava Rain would pull a few strings for Jimmy, wouldn't you? I mean, they are literally related. Nope. She just looked and went, okay, and wrote down the number. That's your cousin, probably four times removed or something. He's in the, the, she's part of the bloodline. Lots of new faces tonight. Lots of feuds playing out. Obviously, build for the Royal Rumble and the big Vince McMahon news. Of course, this show is a 10 out of 10 for me. If you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. Turn on notifications. We'll be back here tomorrow with things you might have missed from the Royal Rumble. And I'll catch you next time. Peace.